You may be in for the biggest shock of your young life. After 23 years living in the same house with them, don't you think I know my own mother and father? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 old Hollywood movies that were ahead of their time. You think you had it, Ralph. I didn't find this place. I had to build it. How do you think I was able to do that? I don't want to know. But I want you to know. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable classic films that were surprisingly prescient, presenting a progressive view with regards to their characters and or stories. What old Hollywood flick do you think was ahead of the curve? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. A Star Is Born The 1954 version of A Star Is Born wasn't the first time this story was seen on the silver screen, but it's one of the best. Don't know what happened it's all a crazy game. The 1976 and 2018 iterations of the film possess the benefit of hindsight and more widespread public knowledge about the inner dealings of Hollywood. This Judy Garland vehicle, however, opened up a lot of forbidden doors many audiences were perhaps unaware of at the time. Hated for failing. I hate me too. I hate me because I failed too. The story exposes the fragility of fame and a forgetful Hollywood system while touching upon how studios once ran Tinseltown. The tale as a whole is relatively straightforward to adapt, but A Star Is Born 1954 does so with a unique brand of brilliance. I thank you. My studio thanks you. All the legions and codes that watch over our industry will be equally pleased, I'm sure. <laughs> Number 9. Rebel Without a Cause The kids aren't going to stay silent anymore. This is just one of the themes present within 1955's Rebel Without a Cause. You're tearing me apart! What? You, you say one thing, he says another, and everybody changes back again! The film helped make icons out of James Dean and Natalie Wood, and was among the earliest to effectively portray the growing generation gap between parents and their children. The youth in Rebel Without a Cause want to be seen and heard, not only by their folks, but the whole world. Mom, I just once, I want to do something right! And I don't want you to run away from me again. Beyond this, the movie also showcases a daring amount of sexual themes and violence by the standards of the day. This arguably allowed Rebel Without a Cause to stand alongside similarly themed films like Blackboard Jungle, serving as turning points for how Hollywood portrayed young people. Uh, he's real abstract. He's, um, he's different. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm cute, too. Number 8. Johnny Guitar. The Western genre is, historically, not a place where female characters have been done justice. Oftentimes, one-dimensional parts falling into arcs like Mother or Damsel in Distress were all actresses could hope for. If I ever get through this humiliation, you'll ruin the day you ever met me! Oh, oh Billy Aiken, fight all you want. It won't do you any good. You've been digging those birds into me for two years. Now you're gonna get your come up and. Johnny Guitar, however, provides a different take on the testosterone-laden world of the Old West. In addition to its arresting style, it allows star Joan Crawford to buck this trend in favor of a more feminist reading. You better get out of here while you can, you and your men. We're here to stay, Mr. McIvers. You'd better get used to that idea. We don't want you here. This was free country when I came. I'm not giving up a single foot of it. Elements of the film also parallel Italy's spaghetti western movement, which came to be in the 60s. Additionally, it seemingly reacts to McCarthy-era political witch hunts of the 1950s, while also playing with gender roles and discussions of intimacy. It is, quite simply, a Western both out of time and ahead of its time. No, you're going to listen. I told you, I don't want to know anymore. You can't shut me up, Johnny. Not anymore. Number seven, Psycho. You know, I've... I think I must have one of those faces you just can't help believing. Is anyone at home? No. Oh, there's somebody sitting up in the window. Alfred Hitchcock was known as the master of suspense, and his work is widely admired by the horror community. This community mainly had science fiction and monster movies serving as its creative sandbox during the 50s. However, Hitchcock's Psycho presented a new and sinister way of telling a horrific story in 1960. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? 
It's here where the nucleus of the slasher movie took concrete, mainstream shape. Psycho predates the boom that would eventually be seen with the Italian Giallo film, as well as North American efforts like Halloween and Black Christmas. The movie's psychosexual themes, tense score, and evocative cinematography have influenced legions of filmmakers to this day. I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know and they'll say, why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. Number 6. The Apartment Oftentimes, a movie's setting or architecture can serve as a character onto itself. The apartment is proof satirizing sexual mores and corporate structure with an expert eye for character and detail from co-writer, producer and director Billy Wilder. Who'd care? I would! Why can't I ever fall in love with somebody nice like you? The film may appear, on surface, as a breezy romantic comedy, and those elements certainly live within it. However, Wilder's film also exposes sexual harassment and power dynamics in the workplace, toxic quid pro quo culture, and even themes of loneliness. Watch your hands, Mr. Kirkby. I beg your pardon? One of these days I'm gonna shut these doors on you and... It's a stark contrast to the effervescent Hollywood musical about life, love, and happiness. Indeed, the apartment is incredibly nuanced and made all the better for it. What are you talking about? I'd spell it out for you, only I can't spell. Number five, guess who's coming to dinner? Mom, this is John. Doc, doc, Dr. Prentice. I'm so pleased to meet you. How liberal is liberal? This is a question asked by the brilliant 1967 film Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Decades before Jordan Peele's horror masterpiece Get Out was released, this romantic dramedy was successfully exploring very similar themes. The white parents in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner have always taught their daughter to be progressive, but when she brings home her black fiancé to meet them, the engaged couple and their families end up having some very frank and uncomfortable discussions. Can you imagine for one minute that I I want to see either one of them hurt. No. No more than my husband does. But hurt, they're going to be. These difficult conversations weren't exactly mainstream or commonplace in 1967, and the movie allowed such subjects to be explored more thoroughly in cinema. Have you thought what people would say about you? Why, in 16 or 17 states, you'd be breaking the law. You'd be criminals and say they changed the law. That don't change the way people feel about this thing. Number four, modern times. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. That's, of course, a quote from a song in Disney's Mary Poppins, but the sentiment can also be applied to this formative Charlie Chaplin film. <laughs> Chaplin's reputation as a physical comedian, an absolute cinematic icon, is secure, and those values are on full display in modern times. However, he was also reputed for his political views, left-leaning opinions that weren't always easy to filter into his filmmaking. Hey! Quit stalling, get back to work! Go on! Modern Times deftly balances social and political discourse and satire within a narrative that criticizes the growing industrial world. As a result, Chaplin is able to say what he wants thematically, while also ensuring that audiences will remain entertained by his screen performance. Number 3. Bonnie and Clyde it could be argued that 1967's Bonnie and Clyde was among the releases that helped bridge the old Hollywood era with the new Hollywood movement. This is largely due to the bold thematic and stylistic choices made by the director and screenwriters. But she wouldn't have the gumption to use it. All right. You just wait right here and you keep your eyes open. Indeed, there's an intense chemistry present between the two leads, 
but not just because of the star power of Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway bring to the roles. The palpable on-screen dynamics are amplified by how daring director Arthur Penn and company were in showcasing the central pair's relationship. So you go on home and you sit in your room and you think, now when and how am I ever going to get away from this? And now you know. Additionally, the final shootout broke boundaries by screen violence standards of the day. It's a bloody ballet, shot in grotesquely beautiful slow motion. And there's nothing else quite like it. Oh, they shooting. I saw those guns. I got so scared. Number two, The Devil and Miss Jones. Don't look up. A shopper's coming. What? A store shopper. They pretend they're customers, but they're only testing you. Be careful how you act. Does The Devil and Miss Jones possess a cliché, old Hollywood-style happy ending? Yes, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. After all, many of us still watch It's a Wonderful Life every year around the holidays, right? Moreover, The Devil and Miss Jones is remarkably prescient with regards to its treatment of union labour. I can outwit morons like you every day of the week and twice on Sundays, which is why I sit behind the desk while you stand in front of it. Why are you? The plot of management infiltrating their workforce to bust a potential union is turned on its head when that manager becomes sympathetic to the cause. From there, it's an exploration into the people at the bottom, the top, and everywhere in between. Don't let the neatly tied bow of a finale discourage you from discovering just how much the devil and Miss Jones has to offer. I'm not going to move one step till those charges are not suspended, but dropped. All right, they're dropped. And I apologize. Now get out of here! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Morocco, a pre-code Hollywood film with a big same-sex smooch. May I have this? Of course. <laughs> the Bandwagon an early example of meta-commentary. Suddenly, all the pieces fitted together. I knew how the crime had been done. The high note on the trumpet that shattered the glass. The Wizard of Oz, a magical Technicolor feast with everything from an amazing script to stellar music. We can make a dimple smile out of a frown. Can you even dye my eyes to match my gown? Uh-huh. Jolly old town. Imitation of life. Racism, sexism, and disparity explored. Are you happy here, honey? Are you finding what you really want? I'm somebody else. I'm white. White. White! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Citizen Kane It's almost cliché at this point to speak about the cinematic brilliance of Citizen Kane. Of course, its reputation as the best movie ever made is subjective. But it's important to recognise that it walked so films emerging in its wake could run. This is notably due to its non-linear narrative structure, impeccable production design, and overall rewatchability. When your precious, underprivileged really get together, oh boy. That's gonna add up to something bigger than your privilege, and I don't know what you'll do. It's arguably not a stretch to compare the back-and-forth storytelling of Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs to the perspective shifts of Citizen Kane. Given all that and more, it's no wonder the groundbreaking 1941 drama deservedly remains in that aforementioned best movie ever conversation. It's just that good. Every straw vote! Every independent poll shows that I'll be elected. Very well then. I'd like to afford to make some promises. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.